What's up everybody, it's Colton from MMOHuts.com and today we're taking a look at Shadowverse. Shadowverse is a free-to-play digital card game. It's now available on Steam, iOS, and Android. It's pretty much what you'd expect from a digital card game in that it's very similar to Hearthstone at its core. There are a few big differentiators that set Shadowverse apart and really serve to make it distinct, however. Gameplay works like you'd expect it to. You draw your opening hand and each player begins with one resource point. Each turn you get another one unless you play cards that give you more. You take it in turns to play followers, spells, and amulets. I don't know why they didn't just call them artifacts. You know, a lot of them aren't even actually amulets. Until somebody's life hits zero. This game, like Hearthstone, features several different classes to choose as the base for your deck and each is centered around its own playstyle. Forestcraft decks focus on playing small fairy minions that give you more fairy minions in your hand to play later. Most of these are one cost, one one followers that can trigger the effects of your other creatures by being played in mass. It's a variation on the old card game staple token decks with a few new twists added in. Swordcraft is my personal favorite class. It focuses on followers of two major types, officers and commanders. Officers are fairly standard minions and commanders can do all kinds of things to them, like summon multiple officers at once, or give all officers on the field certain buffs. This is a very follower-intense deck that thrives on allies that buff one another. Runecraft is the spell-focused class, sort of similar to the mage in Hearthstone. You play followers that buff your spell power and lower your spell costs so you can keep your opponent's board clear of allies, and you can play direct damage and control spells to maintain that advantage. Dragoncraft is much like your standard green deck for any of you Magic the Gathering players out there. It focuses on resource ramping and summoning massive dragons and other high cost followers to smash the hell out of everything. Shadowcraft is all about necromancy. A lot of followers in this class have effects that summon zombies or skeletons when they die and they give you shadow points which are a resource that can be spent on activating necromancy abilities. Bloodcraft works on a sort of vampiric mechanic. You can do damage to the enemy and trigger effects by doing damage to yourself as well. When you're at 10 health or less, you gain an effect called Vengeance, which beefs up some of your cards. You can also mitigate this self-harm by siphoning life from your enemies and their followers. Havencraft is a stalling control type of deck that benefits from amulets with countdown abilities. Every turn they lose a counter, and when they reach zero, they summon powerful followers or trigger other effects that are worth waiting for. Use spells and defense-minded minions to keep yourself alive and then storm the board with stall effects in the middle of the game. Another major mechanic that all classes have access to is the ability to evolve your followers. A countdown begins at the beginning of a game and when it reaches zero, you can begin evolving your followers. You can only do this a certain number of times per game depending on whether you went first or not. The first player can start evolving on turn five but only gets two evolution points, while the second player can start on turn four and gets three. Evolving a follower on the turn they're played allows them to attack immediately, but they can only attack enemy followers. No rushing down the leader with evolved minions. Additionally, you can only evolve one unit per turn, and once you're out of evolution points, that's it. Cards are obtained in a couple of different ways. The story mode, which is pretty in-depth and not the worst I've ever played from a writing standpoint, even if the voice acting is pretty shoddy. And also packs. Packs are bought with tickets, rupees, or crystals. Tickets are earned for completing the tutorial and completing missions. Rupees are earned from matches and from earning achievements in the game, as well as daily login bonuses. Crystals are bought with real world money. Pricing is about $2 in real world currency per pack. Specific cards can also be crafted from melting down cards you don't want or have extras of into vials. This works a lot like the dust system in Hearthstone. More rare cards are worth more vials and so on. The game also features a drafting mode where you build a deck by choosing a single card from two random cards until you have enough to make a complete deck. The drafting mode is nothing new for card games, but it's a good way to earn rewards that get you more cards. This mode requires take two tickets to play, which you can buy with rupees. Overall, I feel Shadowverse is a fun card game with an appealing art style, even if it is a bit overburdened by its fanservice-y nature. The voice acting is really questionable, but the story is more than enjoyable for a free-to-play game, and they do make it a pretty big focus. If you're already financially invested into another card game, which is a must for some of them in order to be competitive, then the cost of entry here would make it not worth it. 
The game is free though, and if you've been looking for a new CCG, then it's at least worth playing the tutorial and getting a feel for the unique mechanics, which are really the draw for Shadowverse. All in all, I give Shadowverse for PC, Android, and iOS an anime boob stone out of 10. Well, that's it for today, guys. Let us know what you think of Shadowverse down in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe and keep it locked on MMOHuds.com for all the latest gaming news and reviews.